Hi, this is Lisa McMahon, author of the new audiobook, The Unwanteds, narrated by Simon Jones. The Unwanteds is a dystopian fantasy about a society where strength and intelligence is encouraged and creativity is punished by death. At the age of 13, twins Alex and Aaron Stowe meet in the commons of Quill, along with all the other 13-year-olds, and they are divided into categories. The Wanteds are intelligent and strong, and they go on to university and to the military. And the Unwanteds are the creative kids, and they are sent to their deaths. I think the story definitely changes when it's read aloud, but only in the very best way. I believe that hearing an audio version of the printed word is something that gives an extra depth to the story. I think we all remember what it's like to have someone read to us, and I think it's something that really can add flavor to the story and add just an extra layer of depth to the story. It's really important to tell stories and hand down stories to the next generation. I think it's really important that kids get a chance to hear their parents, their teachers, and also hear books through audiobooks because it gives them a chance to take a little break from their own lives. They have a chance to sit back and just enjoy a different world for a while. And I think we all remember moments when we were kids where somebody was reading to us. Um, I have very distinct memories of my childhood and the different books that were read to me. And I remember those so much more distinctly than many of the books I read on my own. And it's just a, a beautiful tradition, and I hope it, it continues, and I hope that kids continue to enjoy just the wonderful experience of listening to audiobooks. I was so excited to hear that Simon Jones was cast to narrate the audiobook. Uh, I'm a fan of his, and I always wanted, deep down, the narrator of The Unwanted to have that wonderful English accent. And Simon Jones has just this beautiful quality to his voice. I'm absolutely thrilled that he is narrating this book. I think that he will bring life into some of the characters, all of the characters. I've listened to the first bit of the story already, and uh, he has this wonderful ability to take a minor character and make that character very, very real. And I'm just very excited about this. I feel like The Unwanted was a real family venture. It was about five years ago that I first came up with the idea, but the kids were a big help in that. What happened was they came home from school, and they were probably around 12 and 9 years old, and we found out that some of the arts programs were being cut from their school. And that made me angry, and, and it, it, I felt sad about that because my kids really love the arts. My son is a wonderful drawer. He's an artist. And my daughter is in theater, and she loves to sing. And I said to them, boy, it kind of feels like you're being punished for being creative. And then this light bulb went off in my head, and I was like, oh, wow, what if there really was a place where kids were punished for being creative? So that was sort of the inspiration. And um, when I said that out loud, my idea, my son said, not just punished, sent to their deaths. So that, and I was like, yes. And uh, that was just a very cool moment. And that inspired the entire book and the entire series. And then later on, as I was writing it throughout the years, I would run a few ideas by them. And as readers will find out and listeners will find out, there is some magic in this book and uh, many of the spells that we created we created together as a family. So I'm, I'm really excited to see this happen. Uh, my son, who's now 17, has done some drawings for this book, just some things that inspired him throughout reading the book for me and um, some of the characters, and I felt like he really brought some of them to life. So 
I'm excited to be able to use some of those in my presentations around the country and, uh, and the world. I'm a big audiobook fan. We've been listening to audiobooks, well, ever since I was a little child, but my family has been listening to audiobooks, and a lot of times we'll listen all together. And I think my favorite place to listen to audiobooks is in the car on long trips. I remember very distinctly several books that we've listened to as a family, going back to Junie B. Jones and going through uh, audiobooks like the Lemony Snicket books. And then now, even as the kids are older, we'll still listen to stuff as we are traveling. Our big trip when we moved from Michigan to Arizona, we listened to a lot of Garrison Keillor along the way. So that was um, just a lot of fun. And I feel like as a family, we remember those moments so much. And we remember all the times we laughed together. And it was just a wonderful experience. Hello, this is Simon Jones, the narrator for The Unwanteds by Lisa McMahon. Here is a short sample from the audiobook that I hope you'll enjoy. The Purge There was a hint of wind coming over the top of the stone walls and through the barbed wire sky on the day Alexander Stowe was to be purged. Alex waited in the dusty commons of Quill, and felt the light breeze cooling the sweat on his upper lip. His twin brother Aaron stood beside him, their parents behind. And all around, the entire community of Quill watched and waited, the bland looks of sleeping fish on their faces. Mr. Stowe pressed his finger hard into Alex's back. A final poke in the kidneys, a last goodbye, Alex thought, or a warning not to run. Alex glanced at Aaron, whose face showed the tiniest emotion. Scared, was it, or sad? Alex didn't know. The high priest, Justine, her long white hair undisturbed despite the breeze, rose to her full height and observed the silent crowd. She began without introduction or ado, for a purge was neither exciting nor boring. It just was as many things just were in Quill. There were nearly fifty thirteen-year-olds this year. The people of Quill waited to hear which of these teenagers had been marked as wanted or necessary, and by process of elimination, which of them remained to be purged. Alex scanned the group and their families around the giant half-circle of the amphitheatre. He knew some of them, not all. Alex's mind wandered as the high priest, Justine, announced first the names of the wanteds, and he startled only slightly as the high priest spoke Aaron's name. Aaron, who'd had nothing to worry about, sighed anyway in relief when he was among the fifteen names called. The necessaries were next. Thirteen names were read. Alexander Stowe was not one of those either. Even though Alex knew that he was unwanted, and had known ever since his parents had told him over breakfast when he was ten, the knowledge and three years of preparation weren't enough to stop the sweat that pricked his armpits now. It was down to a mere formality, unless there was a surprise, which there sometimes was, but it didn't matter. Everyone stood motionless until the final twenty names were called. Among the unwanted, Alexander Stowe. Alex didn't move, though his heart fell like a cement block into his gut. He stared straight ahead, as he'd seen the other unwanteds do in past years. His lip quivered for a moment, but he fought to still it. When the governors came over to him, he put his arms out for them to shackle with rusty iron bands. He made his eyes icy cool before he glanced over his shoulder at his parents, who remained unemotional. His father nodded slightly, and finally took his finger out of Alex's back after the shackles were secure. That was a minor relief, but what did it matter now? Aaron sniffed once quietly, catching Alex's attention in the silent amphitheatre. The identical boys held a glance for a moment. Something like a jolt of energy passed between them, and then it was gone. Goodbye, Aaron whispered. Alex swallowed hard, held the stare a second more as the governors tugged at him to follow, 
and then broke the connection and went with the governors to the waiting bus that would take him to his death. Wanted Aaron Stowe, the Wanted, watched his brother Alex board the rusty box of a bus, and then he turned his eyes to the formidable high priest, Justine. She retreated to her aging jeep-like vehicle, flanked by two guards and her secretary, and they began the drive back up the dusty hill to the palace, leaving a trail of grey smoke and a sharp odour to linger in the heavy air. The rest of Quill slowly dispersed on foot. Murmurs surfaced and drifted through the crowd. Not about the purge, of course. That was already a cloudy memory for some. Instead, they spoke of their plans for the rest of the day, for the day of the purge was Quill's one holiday each year. All of the wanteds and most of the necessaries, except those who tended to the farm animals, were free to do as they pleased for the rest of it. Aaron knew what he would be doing. He turned to his mother and father and said with a decisive air, All set, then. Mrs. Stowe nodded primly, and the three of them followed the crowd down the dusty path that led to Quadrant Four, where they lived. We'll finish making your uniform and get your things packed for university, she said. Cut your hair, too. She looked at Mr. Stowe and asked, I don't suppose we'll get the unwanted boys' clothes and shoes back, will we? Mr. Stowe, who had once been quite handsome, but now had curled up a bit from years of back-breaking work as a barrier, shook his head. No. Well, that's a waste. Aaron could use them. The shoes, at least. Wish I'd thought to take them before he left. I wouldn't want to wear them, Aaron said, and then he pinched his lips together before he said more. Still his mother narrowed her eyes and spoke softly, almost fearfully. He'll do well to forget about him. Aaron kept silent for a moment, thinking. You're right, he said finally. It won't happen again. See to it, said Mr. Stowe. After fifteen minutes they had reached Quadrant Four, a residential square mile of tiny identical houses planted closely together like rows of sweet corn, each house the colour of the dry, cracked desert that surrounded it. The crowd of people split up now and weaved their way between the structures until they reached their own individual homes. Aaron and his parents nodded politely to their neighbours as they walked along. When Aaron saw a familiar couple around the same age as his parents walking alone, he touched his mother's sleeve. How odd, he said. Isn't Mr. Ranger a milker? Yes, she said. Why is he out and about instead of doing his job? Aaron's eyes narrowed. He must have been given the day off this year because of the unwanted daughter. Did they know in advance, I wonder? She turned to Mr. Stowe. Not that I heard. That's a blow, Mr. Stowe said. He yawned as they neared their house, number 54-43. They'll be cut off from reproducing now. This was their second offence. Mr. Stowe wrinkled his nose. They'll be completely ridiculed by the wanteds for poor production. Mrs. Stowe gave her husband a disapproving glance. You'll be careful what you say, she snapped. Lest you forget, we've a wanted in our presence now. Aaron raised his chin slightly as his parents stood aside at the front door, allowing the boy to enter before them for the first time. Yes, be careful, father, Aaron said coolly, or I'll have to report your insubordination for a comment like that. Aaron took a dignified stride as he made his way through the tiny kitchen to the even tinier bedroom that he no longer had to share. It's true, he thought. Enough morning. Alex has likely been eliminated by now. The twinge in his gut was soon dulled by thoughts of his now secured future and a tiny surge of power. He was Aaron Stowe, the wanted, and he had a lot more to prove than most, having been born of two necessaries, not to mention overcoming the stigma of a worthless twin brother. It was, Aaron knew, a huge accomplishment to have made it to the top like this. He began to pack his suitcase, a satisfied feeling growing inside him, 
for tonight would be his last night living with his necessary parents. Tomorrow he would go to university to be with the others of his elevated status. <laughs>